It is my great pleasure and high honor to introduce Sec Senator Lisa Murkowski, the great state of Alaska. Uh, I am, you all have her bio. It's, it's an incredible honor for me to be able to uh, be on this podium and introduce the senator. Uh, a huge fan and a great proponent of ocean science and technology, the natural resources that we all rely on so much. I've told to be brief. I am going to be brief. Senator Murkowski. Good afternoon. So I'm either going to wake you up or put you to sleep, depending on where you are from your, from your lunch. But thank you for the opportunity to be back with you at this Ocean Leader Leadership uh, Public Policy Forum. I think I've had the opportunity to be with you over the years, probably, I don't know, maybe since you've been coming here. I don't, I don't know if we, if we line up that much, but it is, uh, it is important because we do line up in so many different areas as we work to, to support and elevate those issues that are important to our oceans. Um, you've, got, you've got some nice warm water fish up there, <laughs> but uh, when we in Alaska think about uh, our oceans and our connection with our ocean resources, uh, it is, it's clearly an understatement when, when you say that there's a significant connect. We probably rely on our ocean uh, resources, uh, I'd say, more, more than most others, certainly for our economy, for our fisheries, our, our shipping, our transportation, um, our most precious cultural traditions uh, as they relate to subsistence. We, we are, we're big, okay? You've heard me say it up here, we're, we're really big, but we have more coastline than, than anybody else. In fact, if you take all the coastline of all of the other states and combine them, we still have more coastline. And it causes us to, to not focus on our oceans um, just occasionally, but to incorporate our oceans into just most everything that we do. When we think of legislation, when we think about economies, when we think about new technologies that can help us protect and secure and really grow those ocean resources. Uh, and they're, they're, they're complicated. You all know that. You are involved and engaged in this as, as well. And so how we work together to understand these, these complex marine systems and how they function and what we have to do, again, to protect the value, the health, and, and truly the abundance that they provide is, is, is so important. And this is where the ocean's research is so critical. We cannot properly manage our marine resources without strong science. It has to begin with the strong science. And, and again, when you think about when you think about a state like Alaska, um, six thousand miles of coastline. If you go around the the map, but if you throw in all of the islands around there, they say it's thirty three thousand miles of of coastline. We've got an uh, exclusive economic zone that covers almost a million and a half square miles. This takes big scientific effort. This is considerable. And so we can't do it on our own. Um, we have resources, but we cannot do this on our own. And this requires strategic partnerships between the public and the private sector for much of the oceanographic research that goes on in our waters. And, and we've learned that we can get a lot more done when our public agencies and our private entities are working together. And this is particularly true when we look to the new technologies for ocean research and, and exploration. We've seen some exciting things, um, some great opportunities for knowledge and technology transfer between our public and private sectors and across our government agencies. And, and these are driving the, the innovation in, in ocean monitoring and data collection, our marine science, our, our marine resource management. So some of the specific examples that I'd like to share with you this afternoon uh, we've got a, a relatively recent partnership between uh, the NSF research vessel, the Sekuliak, 
which is operated by the University of Alaska uh, up in Fairbanks. And, and they're partnering with this newly formed International Arctic Research Icebreaker Consortium, ARIES, which is comprised of 15 partners from 13 different countries. So you've got a partnership between the university, between NSF, between ARIES, and, and taking all of this together really helps to increase the Arctic data collection and enhance the scientific collaboration in the Arctic Ocean and, and the adjacent seas. So great partnership and, and really a good example of, of collaboration. Another important partnership is, is aimed at advancing the, the sound uh, oceanic research and education with what we're seeing with our medium icebreaker, the Healy, uh, and working with the Healy and our scientific community. We've got numerous scientific missions that are, are focused on the Arctic, and they have uh, really been um, helpful, more than helpful, in delivering d significant data. Uh, the discovery of new species of fish, changes in the patterns of, of fish migration. So for, for us, if you're focused on fisheries, knowing what we're seeing with, with different patterns of migration, uh, but from the scientific perspective, discovering a new species. We don't do that every day. Well, we're doing that up north with the collaboration. On the private sector side, the partnership between NOAA and Sail Drone Incorporated. This is providing researchers with some greater capabilities for tracking marine mammals and uh, collecting oceanographic data in the Bering Sea and in the Arctic Ocean. Back, uh, well, it was last year in, in, in 17, NOAA sent two of these sail drones north of the Bering Straits for, for the first time ever. So this is pretty significant. You got, you've got uh, uh, ice conditions up there, but understanding um, that the, the not only the capability and the capacity, but one of the sail drones traveled all the way north to the ice e edge in the, in the Arctic Ocean. Two months of successful monitoring up there, the sail drone then catches up with, with the icebreaker Healy and together they carry out this joint operation. It's these types of, of initiatives using this, these technologies that are allowing us to do so much more, to collect so much more, do it in an innovative way and then partnering with that asset. The Healy has been around for some time. But these are pretty powerful partnerships. And there's some others that are occurring on a smaller scale. In, in southeast Alaska, where I was, was raised, um, our small boat fishermen have been partnering with our state and our federal agencies to map the seafloor while, while they're out fishing. So you got the guys in your little fishing boat, you're, you're fishing halibut, you're fishing salmon. Um, and, and they're helping us out with, with the mapping through, uh, through the technology applications. Up in our Arctic villages, we have community-based monitoring programs that are using local observations to study the marine mammals and the sea ice. So these are folks that are on the ground. Um, they're not necessarily scientists, but believe you me, they're getting engaged. They're getting interested in science. And, and it's not just, not just those that you would look at and, okay, say, these are your science, science, science monitoring folks. These are getting young people involved with this. Outside uh, of Alaska, innovative new apps are putting ocean data, again, in the hands of the fishermen. Um, surfers, you might not think of them as your next round of scientists, uh, but they're helping us out with this data collection. Coastal residents that just have their smartphones, they're helping Americans crowdsource weather observations and then providing that to our federal agencies. So I think these are, these are good, good examples of ways that we can accomplish so much more, that we can leverage partnerships to advance ocean science and, and technology. And again, I think it's important when we think outside of those whose day-to-day -day job is to be engaged in the science, but when, particularly when you get young people who say, I didn't realize this was science that I was doing. I just thought that, that, uh, that 
measuring the snow or observations with the ice. I thought that this was just fun. So we're capturing, we're capturing the imaginations and allowing then that to move forward. So it's exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty proud to have introduced legislation to support these partnerships between the federal government and the state, local, and tribal entities to, to research our nation's vulnerability um, when it comes to ocean acidification. I have long recognized the risks that o ocean acidification poses. Uh, our bill will help strengthen coastal communities, and I look forward to your help and, and your contributions as we work to advance that. We have to look. We have to continue to look for collaborative opportunities at every level. Opportunities where our public agencies can work together with our tech companies, our fishermen, those individual citizens, get our kids involved to collect data, to expand our monitoring capabilities and support ocean science across the country. And when the capabilities of the public and private sectors are isolated from each other, as we know they can be, we lose out. We lose out on the valuable chances to share the, the, the knowledge, the technology, and the research. We also have to work to ensure that the immense amount of ocean and atmospheric data that is collected by the federal government is then available. Put it out there. Make it available to the entrepreneurs and the innovators, like those who are competing for the X Prize Ocean Initiative. But we've got to be sharing as well. Last week, um, up north, uh, off the, uh, the, the northwestern coast of Alaska, um, we, we were hit by some extraordinarily powerful storms. And it's not that storms are unusual this time of year, but uh, what is unusual, what is extraordinary, is, <coughs> is the extent to which the coastal communities were exposed to, to waves that, uh, that were able to come in with these massive storms that typically, ordinarily, historically, have not reached the shore because we have had ice that has been out from the shore for as far as the eye can see. So last week, <coughs> you all were dealing with a pretty, pretty serious uh, nor'easter here. Uh, well, up, up north in, in places like Diomede and, and Gamble and Savunga, they were exposed to some, some very damaging waves and, and this stor storm surge. But uh, we, are, we are ever observant. We are a people that have to be observant of, of our surroundings and, uh, and the impact that we're seeing with, with climate change, the impact that we're seeing uh, to, to warming temperatures and, and the ocean temperatures as well being, uh, being above normal. For us, climate change is, is a visible part of, of our Arctic world. And we need, we must have better information to understand what is happening in our oceans so that we can prepare for, for what lies ahead. And it's these partnerships in research and innovation that allow us to, to get there. So I know that the consortium's members understand this, otherwise you wouldn't be here, but I thank you for the work that you do, uh, the work that you do in support of innovative ocean technologies and the very important and very effective collaborative work that you continue to do. Know that you'll see me again next year when you come back. I look forward to that, uh, but I also look forward to the opportunity where we in Congress can be joining with you around the country as we, as we work to uh, ensure that we are doing right by our oceans. Because when we do right by our oceans, we do right by our people. And I thank you for what you're doing to make it all right. Appreciate it.